Good evening, this is TC and English News Edition, and you're watching with me, Ning Hui Kim Kong Sai. First, the headlines. Landslide in Dim Tang Long Village claimed lives of mother and child, one critically injured. 73 killed, several feared missing in Kerala's Wayanet. Navy's 15 member team to reach disaster site. IMD forecasts active monsoon conditions over most part of northwest India for next three to four days. News in detail. A landslide in Dimtang Long Village, Tamang Long Ward No. 3 claimed the life of a mother and her child last night, July 29. Additionally, one person identified as Rinsing Long Kame has been critically injured in the incident. Taking to his ex-handle, Manipur CM wrote, Deeply saddened to learn about the tragic loss of a mother and her child due to the landslide that occurred last night in Dim Tang Long Village, Tamang Long, Ward No. 3. My heart goes out to the Barry family. Our thoughts are with Mr. Rinsin Lungkame, who has been critically injured in this incident. We are taking immediate steps to ensure he received the necessary medical attention and advanced care. And Ms. opposes and accusations that Manipur has been neglected in the union budget, Chief Minister Anbiran Singh has firmly rebuked the claims. Addressing the concern, Singh stated, It's their petty politics. Manipur has already received not less than 250 crore for health storms and floods, and we have already distributed it to the people. The opposition's criticism focused on the perceived lack of financial allocations for Manipur in the recent budget. However, Singh said that substantial funds have already been allocated and effectively utilized to address natural disaster impacts. The controversy escalated earlier on July 23rd when Lok Sabha MP Dr. Angom Chabimol Akhoizam condemned the union budget 2024 for allegedly neglecting internally displaced persons, IDPs, in Manipur. Dr. Akhoizam criticized the budget for its failure to include flood relief or a rehabilitation package for IDPs, exclaiming, Absence dining is Manipur. That's what this budget says. There is no mention of flood relief or rehabilitation package for IDPs in our state. We reports of some schools in the districts are refusing to provide the permanent education number PEN to their students. The Kuki Students Organization KSO Church Ampur, issued a press release stating that PEN is essential for every student in accordance with the new education policy. 2023, which meant that if for students appearing in the Zawaharlal Navodaya Selection Test (JNVST) nationwide, the KSO Chirichampur asks all recognized private schools in the district not to obstruct students from participating in this selection test. Schools should sign the application forms and provide all necessary documents to ensure students can enter Zawaharlal. Navadaya Vidyalayas, JNVs, denying such opportunities hinders the educational prospect of our students. The release father say that the Navadaya Vidyalaya Samiti MVS has established strict guidelines for the JNVST, stating that students without a PE and will be denied admission. Only eligible students currently enrolled in class 5 in the current academic sessions are permitted to appear for the ZMVST. Additionally, non-recognized schools are advised to refrain from issuing application forms and other initial documents, as this may create further complications for aspiring candidates. Therefore, the student body requests parents and guardians to remain vigilant and report any incidents of recognized private schools obstructing students from appearing in the ZMVST to the undersigned office. Strings and actions, including legal measures, will be initiated against the schools. 
The release party say that this notice aims to clarify any doubts and prevent unnecessary problems for aspiring candidates, students, and parents aided the release. Today, the district administration has provided relief materials to the people living in the relief camps in the district. This is the first time in a week that the relief materials have been distributed. The materials were distributed to 46 relief camps under the SDO Tuibo, which have a total of 7,144 beneficiaries. The materials include 396 bags of rice, 80.90 bags of dal, 30.30 bags of mutter, 19.85 bags of onion, 49.80 kg of cooking oil, 20.16 kg of salt, totaling 7,242 items. Similarly, under the Church Jampur SDO, 32 relief games with 5,126 beneficiaries received. 284 bags of rice, 58.20 bags of dal, 22.30 bags of mother, 14.40 bags of onion, 35.50 kg of cooking oil, 14.50 kg of salt, totaling 5,194 items. Under the Psychot SDO, 7 relief games with 1,010 beneficiaries received. 56.50 bags of rice, 11.40 bags of dal, 4.40 bags of mother, 2.80 bags of onion, 6.90 kg of cooking oil, 2.80 kg of salt, totaling 1,023 items. Under the SDO Sing Art, 4 relief games with 891 beneficiaries received, 49.50 bags of rice, 10.30 bags of dal, 4.10 bags of mother, 2.60 bags of onion, 6.30 kg of cooking oil, 2.60 kg of salt, totaling 901 items. And under the SDO thing I got, 4 relief games with 813 beneficiaries received, 45.50 bags of rice, 9.30 bags of dal, 3.60 bags of mother, 8.40 bags of onion, 5.80 kg of cooking oil, 2.40 kg of salt, totaling 823 items. Today, a total of 93 relief games with 14,984 beneficiaries receive relief materials from the district administration, totaling 831.50 bags of rice, 170.10 bags of dal. 64.70 bags of mother, 42.5 bags of onion, 104.30 bags of kg of cooking oil, 42.46 kg of salt, totaling 15,183 items. Accusing the UNLF Bombay group of attacking a young Naga women and six others on July 26 in Infal, the NSC and I am has asked the former to keep a tight rein on his gathers within the group, if at all justice is to be done. In a statement issued to New My News Network yesterday, the NSC and I am said, It is very unfortunate and shocking to learn of the incident that took place on the night of July 26, 2024 at the Ocean Lodge, Kumal Lampaku Infal where a young Naga lady, along with her six friends, were physically assaulted with arms by some members belonging to UNLF Bombay Group in Fall Valley-based organizations. The NSC and I am also said the way the unruly members of UNLF Bombay attacked a young Naga lady who was verbally abused, mishandled, and followed by physical molestations, and even brandishing firearms and beating up severely to the other six friends who came to rescue her, is highly condemnable. The NSC and I am then questions, is it not a crime to assault, molest, and outrage the modesty of a woman? The NSC and I am then said, this act of violence committed against the innocent civilian, is not acceptable in our society. 
The situation in Moray has been precarious for some time, but the livelihood of its residents can no longer be sustained. In recent days, individuals from Moray living in various locations have been called back. And it has been observed that the living conditions of the villagers have significantly improved as a result. Furthermore, educational institutions such as colleges and schools, as well as pharmacies, are functioning smoothly in the area. However, it has been noted that the people of Moray are struggling to make ends meet, and there is uncertainty regarding how long they will be able to continue living in this manner. It is important to acknowledge that we are living in close proximity to our adversaries, which restricts the free and peaceful movement of Moray's residents. While some media outlets may report that the situation in Moray is trending towards peace, this assertion can be disputed. Notwithstanding the presence of central forces, a substantial number of state forces are also operating in the region, surpassing previous levels. The influx of state forces suggests that the situation is not progressing towards peace. A man arrested on the charges of murdering a 15-year-old girl was injured in police firing when he allegedly tried to flee from custody on Monday, a senior official said. The incident took place in Hazo Income Group District when he was taken to the crime scene for investigations. We had arrested the accused on July 26 for the murder of a 15-year-old girl on July 25. Early on Monday morning, police had taken him to the crime scene when he pushed one of our constables and tried to flee. He aided. Police personnel asked him to stop, but he did not listen, following which one round was fired at his leg, the officer said. He sustained a bullet injury in his left leg. He was taken to Gohati Medical College and Hospital, where he is undergoing treatment, he aided. Nagaland is buzzing with anticipations as it prepares to host the 25th editions of the Hornbill Music Festival, scheduled for December 1 to 10, 2024. Abu Mehta, Advisor to the Chief Minister of Nagaland recently unveiled a redesigned logo for the event, signaling the start of the countdown to this landmark celebration. Meta took to social media to share his excitement about the upcoming festival. The music festival is going to be one of the biggest ever international events with headliners gallery, he exclaimed, urging fans to start making their plans to attend. The Hornbill Festival, named after the Indian Hornbill bird, has become a cultural corner store for Nagaland since its inception in 2000. What began as a government initiative to promote, initiative to promote inter-tribal interactions and showcase Naga cultural heritage has evolved into a major tourist attraction, drawing visitors from across India and around the world, known as the Festival of Festivals. The event features a diverse array of activities that highlight the rich traditions of the Naga people. Attendees can expect vibrant displays of indigenous music, dance, food, and crafts from the states, 16 major tribes. The festival grounds at the Sama Heritage Village, located about 12 kilometers from the state capital, Kohima, transformed into a bustling hub of cultural exchange and celebrations. While details of the 2024 lineup are yet to be announced, organizers hint at an impressive roster of international and domestic artists that will elevate the festival musical offerings to new heights. The event has previously featured performances across various genres, from traditional Naga music to contemporary rock and pop. Congress General Secretary Organization KSC Venu Gopal on Tuesday expressed his condolences to the families of the victims who died in Wyanet landslides. Over 40 people were killed in a massive landslide that occurred at Juralpara in Kerala's Wyanet on Tuesday at around 2 a.m. Digging to the microblogging site X, 
The Congress MP said, I am devastated by the new soft landslide in Wyanet, which have killed and injured so many people. My condolences to the families of the victims, and I pray for the speedy recovery of the injured. We are constantly monitoring the situations and ask all UDF workers to assist the authorities in relief efforts in full measure. Lok Sabah Rahul Khan DC has spoken to the Kerala CM and the Wayanad DC to address this at the earliest. We also spoke to Defense Minister Rasna Singh Ji, who has given us positive assurance about providing necessary relief assistance. Venugopal aided. The Congress leader Fadi said that they have also requested the center and the Kerala government to ensure search and rescue operations are carried out on a war footing to prevent any further loss of life. Earlier, the leader of the opposition in the Lok Sabha, Rahul Gandhi, also conveyed his condolences to the families affected by the landslides. In a post on his ex handle, he said, I am deeply anguished by the massive landslide near my body in Wayanet. My heartfelt condolences go out to the buried families who have lost their loved ones. I hope those still trapped are brought to safety soon. India Meteorological Department has forecast active motion conditions over most part of Northwest India for the next three to four days. According to IMD, the monsoon trough is active and south of its normal position at mean sea level. It is likely to shift gradually northwards during the next two to four days. The weather department say that under the influence of active monsoon trough, widespread rainfall with isolated heavy falls is expected over Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Zammu, Kashmir, Ladakh, Gilgit, Baltistan, Muzaffarabad, Punjab, Haryana, Chandigarh, Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, and West Rajasthan during the next four days. The IMD also forecasts widespread rainfall with isolated heavy falls over West, Central, South Peninsula, East, and Northeast India for the next few days. The weather department say that very heavy rainfall is expected at isolated places over Saurashtra, Kutch, Konkan, Goa, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Chhattisgarh, Coastal, and South Interior Karnataka, Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura, Arunachal Pradesh, and Odisha until the 2nd of August. Four people were killed following a blast inside a shop at the Sapar area of Zamu and Kashmir on Monday. The incident occurred inside the shop of a scrap dealer located at the Sir Colony in Baramula, Sapur town. According to officials, some people were unloading scrap from a truck when the blast occurred. Speaking to the media, SSP Sapur Divyas D said, four people have died so far in the blast and we have called the FSL team to investigate the matter. They had procured scrap from Ladakh and were in the process of unloading it when the blast took place. While two persons died on the spot, the other two succumbed to injuries later, the official said, adding the deceased have been identified as Nazir Ahmad Nadro, 40 years, Azim Asraf Mir, 20 years, Adil Rasid Bhatt, 23, and Mohammed Azhar, 25. All the victims were residents of Sir Colony. The exact nature and cause of the explosions was not immediately known. A team of forensic experts has been rushed to the site, the official aided. Two people died and 20 others were injured after a horror Mumbai passenger train derailed in the early hours of Tuesday. The incident took place around 3.43 a.m. near Jharkhand's Charadhapur division between Raskarswan, West Altar, and Barabambu. All the injured passengers have been given first aid, officials said. According to initial information, 18 coaches of the train were derailed, of which 16 were passenger coaches, one power car, and one pantry car, reported PTI. 
Railway official says that the incident occurred after a good train is coming from the opposite side derailed and impacted the passenger train passing by from the opposite side. Further investigation is underway. Meanwhile, West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee expressed her condolences to the families of the deceased and also hit out at the center over the rail incident. Another disastrous rail accident. Hora Mumbai mail derails in Chakradharpur divisions in Jharkhand today early morning. Multiple deaths and huge number of injuries are the tragic consequences. I seriously ask, is this governance the series of nightmares almost every week? These unending processions of deaths and injuries on railway tracks. For how long shall we tolerate this? Will there be no end to the callousness of government of India? She wrote on X. Several incidents of train derailments have been reported this month. On July 18, at least four people were killed and around 20 sustained injuries after several budgets of the Dibrugard Express derailed in Uttar Pradesh, Gonda. A few days later, a good train going from Lucknow to Delhi derailed near Amroha railway station. Disrupting the Delhi Lucknow rail line. However, no loss of life or injuries were reported. Amid the uproar over three drownings, Rajinder Nagar MLA from the Am Admi Party (AAP) Durgesh Patak blamed the Bharatiya Janata Party (BJP) for not doing anything during its 15 years rule at the municipal corporations of Delhi, and said the drainage system in the national capital will have to be rebuilt. On Saturday, three young IAS experience were killed in the basement of Rao's IAS study circle in Old Rajinder Nagar. The rainwater got collected on the road that eventually filled the basement with rainwater. The students were preparing for the UPSC exams at the library situated in the basement in the Rajinder Nagar area. Streya Yadav of Ambekar Nagar in Uttar Pradesh, Tanya Soni from Telangana, and Nevin Belwind from Ernakulam in Kerala died in the flooding due to heavy rain. Patak, while speaking to News 18, said in Hindi, If anyone is responsible for this death, then it is the Lieutenant Governor LZ and the BJP. How can they ask questions to us? The BJP has its parliamentary and there for the past 10 years. They could have built the drainage system. Why have they not taken any steps? The AAP MLA, who took charge after winning the June 2023 assembly by Post State, say that they cannot change the complete pictures in just one and a half years. I took charge just 1.5 years ago. There are 2,000 lands. I cannot put drainage across all these lands in just 1.5 years. If you want to make an argument and use false statement, then there is no end to it. But if you want to take responsibility and take action, then you must, he said, adding that since the city government doesn't have power to transfer and post, an official don't listen to the elected representatives. But I say that. The flooding and lack of drainage system in the area are not new issues. The main thing is that it was not a low-lying area, and this is not a new problem. It was a drain under the MCD. We have been in power and the MCD from the last one year only. But this problem is very old for the past 20 to 25 years. Before us, the BJP ruled the MCD for 15 years. The LG2 has said, that no work has been done on these trains for the last one decade, he said. Patak went on to say that his party was carrying the sins of the BJP. This was their responsibility, he added. After the incident, BJP spokesperson Sejad Punawala has said on X, This is not an accident, but a murder committed by the armed at me party. It is criminal negligence due to which at least two girls have lost their lives. The MLA said that all illegal institutions will be banned on priority. This is not a problem just in Rajinder Nagar, but the entire city, drainage system, even when built 
has been illegally captured by the locals. We need strong action across the areas. The entire drainage system needs to be corrected. Otherwise, where will the water go, he said. That simply building several lines will not solve the issue. Several lines cannot take this much water. This is not something that has, that has happened overnight. It happened over the last 20 to 25 years. Even in the post colonies, we have people have captured the drain. Actions need to be taken against such practices. The entire drainage system in Delhi is finished. It has to be rebuilt completely. He added. Israel launched airstrikes at Hezbollah targets in Lebanon overnight in retaliation for Saturday's rocket attack on a football pitch in the Israeli occupied Golan Heights, increasing fears of a broader conflict in the region. The targets were deep inside Lebanon and included weapons cages and military infrastructure, according to an Israel Defense Forces IDF read out on Sunday. Hezbollah denied that it was responsible for the attack on Saturday, which killed at least 11 people, many of them children. The IDF refuted that and accused the Iran-backed militant group of conducting the strike, vowing a response. This is a Hezbollah rocket, and whoever launches such a rocket into build-up area wants to kill civilians, wants to kill children. Herzi Halevi, IDF's chief of staff, said during a visit to the football pitch, the Golan High strike was the deadliest in Israel or Israeli annexed territory since the start of the conflict in the Gaza Strip last October. Hezbollah and Israel have been treading fire in areas along the Lebanon-Israel border, but the rocket attack and retaliatory airstrikes heightened fears of escalations into a border conflict. The United Nations called on Israel and Hezbollah to show maximum restraint in a statement after Sunday's attack. It could ignite a wider conflagration that would engulf the entire region in a catastrophe beyond belief, the UN said in a statement. In a post on X, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office said, Hezbollah will pay a heavy price for this that it has not paid to this point. Netanyahu was in the United States during the rocket attack on a trip to woo presidential candidate Donald Trump and secure a place of unequivocal support for Israel, militarily and financial suit. He win the U.S. elections in November. The Israeli leader cut his trip short and is expected to return home on Sunday, the New York Times reported. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Sunday warned the United States that if Washington deployed long-range missiles in Germany, then Russia would station similar missiles in striking distance of the West. The United States said on July 10 that it would start deploying long-range missiles in Germany from 2026 in preparations for a longer-term deployment that will include SM-6. The Mayhawk cruise missiles and developmental hypersonic weapons. In a speech to sailors from Russia, China, Algeria, and India to mark Russian Navy Day in the former imperial capital of St. Petersburg, Putin warned the United States that it risks triggering a Cold War style missile crisis with the move. The flight time to targets on our territory of such missiles, which in the future may be equipped with nuclear warheads will be about 10 minutes, Putin said. We will take mirror measures to deploy. Taking into account the actions of the United States, if satellite is satellites in Europe and in other regions of the world. Putin, who sent his army into Ukraine in 2022, cast a war as part of a historic struggle with the West, which he says humiliated Russia after the Soviet Union fell in 1991 by encroaching on what he considers Moscow's sphere of influence. Ukraine and the West say Putin is engaged in an imperial-style land grab. They have vowed to defeat Russia, which currently controls over 18% of Ukraine, including Crimea and parts of four regions in eastern Ukraine. Russia says the lands. 
once part of Russian Empire are now again part of Russia and that they will never be given back. Russian and US diplomats say their diplomatic relations are worse even that during the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis and both Moscow and Washington have urged de-escalations with both have met steps towards escalation. Putin said that the United States was striking tensions and had transferred Typhoon missile system to Denmark and the Philippines and compared the U.S. plans to NATO decision to deploy Pershing to launchers in Western Europe in 1979. The Soviet leadership, including General Secretary Yuri and Pov, fearing Pershing II deployments were part of a elaborated U.S.-led plan to decapitate the Soviet Union by taking out its political and military leadership. This situation is reminiscent of the events of the Cold War related to deployment of American media. Range Pershing missiles in Europe, Putin said. The Pershing II, designed to deliver a variable yield nuclear warhead, was deployed to West Germany in 1983. In 1983, the ailing Andrew Polf and the KZB interpreted a series of U.S. moves including the Pershing II deployment and a major NATO exercise as sign the West was about to launch a preemptive strike on the Soviet Union. Putin repeated an earlier warning that Russia could resume production of intermediate and shorter range nuclear capable missiles and, and then consider where to deploy them after the United States brought similar missiles to Europe and Asia. China's threat to any individual country is a threat to the world. Taiwan President Lai ching said on Tuesday, adding that the island will continue to work hard to promote defensive self-reliance and foreign arms purchases. Taiwan will also work hard to promote regional peace and stability, like told a conference of international lawmakers meeting to discuss threats posed by China. I like to stress that China's threat to any individual country is a threat to the world, like told the Interparliamentary Alliance on China IPSC conference in Taipei, a group with ties to an international network of several hundred politicians who promote democratic values and call on Beijing to abide by rules-based international order. Taiwan will do its best to put out a democratic protections umbrella with our democratic partners to keep them away from the threat of authoritarianism, Lai said to the lawmakers from 24 countries including Australia, Britain, Japan and Germany, China, with views the democratically governed island as its territory has been staging so-called gray zone military exercise for years to pressure Taipei to accept Beijing's claims of sovereignty despite Taiwan's strong objections. Taiwan's armed forces are dwarfed by those of China's, but it has been modernizing its military with the help of aliens such as the United States. In a statement, some IPSC lawmakers say that they have received emails and phone calls from Chinese officials before they left for the submit to dissuade them from attending. Democratically elected lawmakers are free to visit and support causes of their choosing. This is the normal exercise of their rights and responsibilities as elected officials, the statement said. China's foreign military criticized IPSC for what it said was the malicious hyping up of China-related issues. We advise the parliamentarians concerned to abandon ideological bias, stop using the Taiwan issue to interfere in China's internal affairs, said Foreign Ministry spokesperson Lin Jian. The daughter of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is reportedly being groomed to become the next leader of the reclusive nations, according to South Korean spy agency. This development marks a significant indication of succession planning within the North Korean regime. South Korea's National Intelligence Service and IS revealed these informations during a Parliamentary Intelligence Committee meeting as reported by Yoon Hub News Agency on Monday. Lee sung Kyun, a member of the committee, confirmed that Kim's daughter, Ju Wei, is being prepared for a future leadership role. 
While North Korea state media has documented Julia's public appearance, including several high-profile events alongside her father, there has been no official mentions of her political future until now. Her presence at such events have sparked speculations about her potential role in the regime, but the NIS latest report provides the first substantial evidence of her grooming for leadership. Kim Jong-un, who himself ascended to power following the death of his father, Kim Jong-2, Jong in 2011, appears to be following the dynasty's traditions of maintaining power within the family. The training of Zuya suggests a long-term plan to ensure the continuity of Kim's family's rule over North Korea. The NIS did not disclose specific details about the nature of Zuya's training or the timeline for her potential extension. At least two people have been reportedly dead, and more than 100 are likely injured after a passenger train in Russia derailed on Monday afternoon. As per reports, the train collided with a truck and derailed in the southern Volgarat region. About eight train cars derailed due to these collisions, and emergency crews were immediately called to the scene. A passenger train carrying 800 people derailed in Russia on Monday afternoon. As per a Reuters report, at least two people were killed and more than 100 were injured in this unfortunate incident. The train was traveling through the Volgarat region when it collided with a truck that caused the derailment. The accident happened around 12.35 local time when the truck drove into a railroad crossing. About eight passenger cars were thrown from the track due to these collisions, Russian media reported. The train reportedly was traveling from Kazan in Tatarstan to Elder on the Black Sea when it derailed near the Kotel Nikovo station. The accident happened about 1,200 kilometers south of Moscow, the report suggested. Local media channels in Russia have also reported that the passenger train was carrying 800 people during the accident. Relief teams and repair trains were immediately dispatched to the scene. So far, Russian authorities and media have confirmed the accident. As per Reuters report, 384 emergency workers have been employed to start rescue operations at the site. Emergency helicopters have also been deployed. There are several unverified videos and photos circulating online that show the massive wreckage caused during the train derailing in Russia. Railway lines and services have been impacted for now. Authorities have decided to halt all operations in the region. More details and updates about the accidents are awaited. That's all from us tonight and we thank you for joining our program.